Praise God, praise God. Amen. Praise God. A little bit of amazing grace. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's give God some praise today. And I hope and believe that you and are having a great day. At least I hope you are. I want to ask if uh, this hour we prepare our hearts to turn to 2 Thessalonians, uh, the third chapter. Again, 2 Thessalonians, uh, the third chapter chapter amen and we'll begin reading at verse 7 as we continue with our stewardship emphasis may we have a word of prayer eternal father we thank you for this day we bless your holy and righteous name we acknowledge O oh lord you this very moment in our lives no matter what we are dealing with and the thoughts that are on our mind we put pause right now in every situation and concern that we're dealing with. I ask now, Lord, that you will use me and use us in this time of sharing your word. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray and we give thanks. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give God praise. Give God praise. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Today we want to look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. And begin at verses 7 through 10. And remember, each time we come together, we want to share some tidbits about stewardship, finances, and how we can uh, do better with what God has blessed us with. And we are specifically at times talking about money. Last week, we talked about a format that can be used in order to organize one's uh, finances. We left you with the thought that it is good to plan our personal finances for every 30 days. And the reason why is, in most instances, we receive a bill or a debt one time per month. Now, there are exceptions, but for the most part, those of us who have routine bills, routine debts, we pay every 30 days or within 30 days. However, on the other hand, because we may have debts once per month per whatever place or business that may be, our income may vary, <clears throat> meaning not everyone is paid once a month. There are times when individuals are paid every other week or every week. And sometimes we spend that money as we receive it without thinking about we need to plan within a 30-day period. We suggested that in our structure of setting up a budget, that tithes and offerings should be first. And here again, we're talking about mainline Christianity. Not everyone adopts this. But I will say that if you're not in a mainline church, or perhaps you may be listening and may not be a part of the church at all, one teaching I believe is very true, that no one should receive everything and not give back something. Now, those of us that are committed to tithes and offerings, and I hope others are listening and you're praying and thinking about it, we will get to Malachi chapter 3 at some point. But tithe is 10%, and offering is above that. So if I were to receive $1,000 this month for income for the whole 30 days, $100 is my tithe, and then I may give $20 or $30 to other areas in the church, and that would be my offering. So that's just a quick example. The second item is your debts, your bills. How do you prioritize your bills? So we know withholdings come out of our checks, Social Security, uh, federal taxes, those that are in states that require state taxes, then so on and so forth. But, but how do we organize our bills? Well, we can organize our bills in terms of significance. And the top bill for everyone is to make sure that we have, what, a roof over our head. It does not matter if you're living in a apartment, mobile home, condo, townhouse, purchasing a house, or renting a house. Our first priority is to make sure that a roof is over our heads. I've seen some people in difficult situations, and they'll use their money for everything else and plan to pay for where they will live last. That cannot happen. Even if your utilities 
have to, uh, if you don't have no money for your utilities, at least you have a way, a place to lay your head down at night. So if I can just give this as a basic outline. So you need your house. You need your home. Number two, uh, many of us have car payments. Pay for your car. Take care of your car. Then you have your utilities, electric. Some of us are uh, gas. Some are completely electric. Then we move toward insurances. You need to have insurances on your, your property, insurances on your home, insurance on your car. Then we shift toward credit cards. It may not be wise to have 10 credit cards. One, possibly two, but 10, 12, that's a lot. There are ways to try to get that under control. Let me continue with the list. Uh, after credit cards, we also have our cell phones, uh, cable, how you do Wi-Fi. And then we talk about food and then we talk about entertainment. So all that fits in the category of debts. Here again, ties and offerings, then debts, and then we move toward saving and investing. Every time you get paid, save money. We know that savings accounts right now are not yielding much interest. Nonetheless, you still should set some money aside. Put some of it in the bank and find a place that you might want to keep some at home. And then when it comes to investments, think about retirements, 401ks, 403bs, uh, IRAs, as well as pension plans and other investments that you could put money into in order to have a nest egg or at least funds that you can rely on when you really would need it. So that's that's our take this today on uh, tithes and offerings, take care of your debts, number three, save, and then four, invest. Let's look at our text today, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, looking at verses 7 through, in fact, we'll read all the way through 11. And we're focusing on income, really, income. For you yourselves know how you ought to follow our example. This is Paul speaking to the church of Thessalonica. We were not idle when we were with you. There are a number of dynamics that are taking place in the church of Thessalonica as Paul writes this letter. One key element to keep in mind is that it also appears that there were other ministers who were in Thessalonica and were really not doing the things that they needed to do. Let me keep going and we'll come back. Verse 8, nor did we eat anyone's food without paying for it. On the contrary, we worked night and day laboring and toiling so that we would not be a burden to any of you. Verse 9, we did this not because we do not have the right to such help, but in order to make ourselves a model for you to follow. For even when we were with you, we gave you this rule. If a man, if a person will not work, he shall not eat. We hear that some among you are idle. They're not busy. They are busy bodies. This pause here. One of the key things to look at, and I've been reading in different translations, where it says, for you all to know how you ought to follow our example. In the King James Version, it talks about, or uh, uses the word disorderly. Paul set a solid example for other leaders and members of the body of Christ to follow so that they were not misleading through the wrong type of example. Sometimes we as leaders give the wrong kind of information and also the wrong kind of example for pe people to see. I believe that leaders ought to be a reflection of not only what they do in public, but also what they do at home. In this case, Paul is dealing with the context of how individuals receive income. What he tells them is that as a person who ministers the gospel and can live off of the gospel or from the gospel, that he gave an example so that he worked other jobs I believe we know Paul as a tent maker and did other things 
to bring in income, to set an example to work. Sometimes people in ministry can per be perceived as not working, and sometimes people in ministry are not working. One of the things that is so key for those of us who live from the gospel is that we show up for work. What are some of the things we do? With those of us who are in Methodism, Christian Methodism, the job description, as I understand it, according to the word, and also in keeping with the discipline, is three things. Number one, our first responsibility as we think about being pastors is to do preaching. That's our first obligation, preaching. Preaching the word, teaching the word. The second obligation is being able to administrate, to uh, be able to provide guidance when it comes to ministry and God's people. And then thirdly, care for the flock. Care for the people. The people need to know that you care. I want to repeat that again. And, and now when I'm saying it, it not only applies to those of us in Methodism or in the CME Church, it would apply to any individual who's serving as a pastor who receives compensation. Number one, the first thing is preaching and teaching, the ministry of the word. The second thing is to provide administration regarding the ministry. And the third thing is Caring for the flock. This is the kind of example that Paul speaks of in terms of the, the working part or the doing part. Preaching is not something we just stand up and perform as if it's magic. It requires work. It requires study. It requires time. Over the years, when I look at my life and talk to other preachers, there are times we may spend 12, 15, sometimes 20 hours working on one message. That's not including Bible study and additional times where we may preach other places during the week. That's not accounting for the meetings, times of counseling, calling. Visitation is restricted and right now. A lot of us are not allowed to go to the hospital due to COVID, but at least we can get what a call in to check on people. I love the fact now that we start doing in person where at least we can see one another, ministry, drive-throughs, and things of that nature. Let's keep going. One of the things that was revealed, that evidently there were people who went among the followers in Thessalonica, wanted to eat, take of the people, but did not work. And Paul is confronting this. And he uses this, he, he uses this phrase. He says, if you don't work, you should not eat. That's a serious thing. If you do not work, then you should not eat. Paul was not taking this thing lightly. One of the things that's so important when we think about every day, everyone desires to eat. Everyone is eating in order to take care of his or her body or their family. And the one way we do that is by earning our income. Earning based upon the career or the vocation that we've been assigned to do. I don't know about you, but do everything you can, both in word and deed, to glorify God. But lastly, listen to this last verse. We hear that some among you are idle. They're not busy. They are busy bodies. You heard the expression that an idle mind is a devil's workshop. That sometimes people appear to be working when really they're just doing busy things. And this is why we stated earlier about just for those of us that are passionate and preaching, there are specific things in terms of how we ought to employ ourselves in terms of our work and in terms of our labor. I hope and pray that whether you're a minister in a church or you're a member of a church, that you're doing what you can to, to, to work and labor that God would get glory, whether it be of the gospel, whether it be in a career, or whether it be a business that you may have, that when you do it, that God gets all the honor 
out of your word. Well, look, take care and I hope and pray that we've offered some, some thoughts that can challenge you and press and push you. But by all means, when you receive an income, it ought to be from your labors. And then we talked about in the very beginning ways that you can structure in terms of taking care of your personal responsibilities. Well, look, have a great day. And I hope you and your family are doing well. Now, may we have a word of prayer. And don't forget to join us this Sunday at 1045 a.m. for worship service. That's Central Town, call the Metro, ftw.com. And of course, we have Sunday school also at 930 a.m. Take care and we wish you and your family well. May we pray. Turn to Father, we want to thank you for this day. We give you the praises and we do give you the glory. We ask now, Lord, that you will guide our ways of taking care of our personal obligations, our personal expenses. Help us when we receive our incomes, however often it might be and whatever the amount may be, that we use it to your glory. We pray for those that are seeking employment and seeking careers and seeking to do even better so that they can take care of themselves and those. And then last, oh Lord, those of us who are ministers of the gospel, may we labor in preaching, labor at administrating, and labor at demonstrating and caring for the people. In the name of Jesus of Christ, we pray and we give thanks. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give God praise. Give God praise. Amen. Take care and have a great day.